I took almost 10,000 photos at this wedding, and I'm going to see if I can edit it in under one hour. Normally a wedding like this would take me about two hours to call, about eight hours to do my first pass, and another three or four hours to do my final adjustments. So that's like 14 hours in total. But today I'm going to use Imagine AI to see how much I can actually speed up my workflow. Now I'm not expecting to have perfect edits and fine tune every single image in under 60 minutes. The goal is actually just to see what's possible if I only had an hour to deliver a full gallery and let you see the kind of results that Imagine might be able to create for you. So because they are the sponsor of this video, Imagine has also hooked you up with 1500 free edits using the link in the description if you wanna give this a test for yourself. Here's the wedding we're gonna be working with. It's a full wedding day with pretty much everything from harsh sunlight during the ceremony to overcast parts of the day during the cocktail cocktail hour to insanely dark reception photos and everything in between. So Imagine AI is going to handle the culling for me and the base edit, which really isn't going to take any time for me, so it's not part of the 60 minutes because while it's working, I could be doing anything else. Now once Imagine has finished those initial edits and I've imported them into Lightroom, that's when we're going to start the timer. I've got one hour to polish, export, and deliver the final gallery. Now there are almost 10,000 raw images from this particular wedding we're going to be editing together. It had two shooters over a day and a half, and so the only way I can possibly get this done in under an hour is to use Imagine's AI culling tool. You can either have Imagine just go through and keep the best of everything, or this is a really cool feature for me, call to an exact number. Because I know I have 10,000 photos, I don't want 3,000 great photos. I actually wanna kinda narrow it down to maybe the best 1,000 or 1,100, something like that. So from here, I'm gonna click Upload, and just like that, Imagine is now going to take over for me. It's going to start uploading 9,644 beautiful photos. And obviously, the speed for how long it takes to upload all these photos is going to depend on your internet speed. What it's gonna do is it opens up this uh, little DNG converter, and it's turning your raw file into a small, very, very small file, a DNG that gets uploaded to the cloud. So with my internet speed, it's saying somewhere around 45 minutes. I would recommend you do this overnight. The whole point is that you can spend time on your business instead of in your business by letting Imagine do something like this for you. Pacha! So, Imagine has finished culling all of my photos. It took about an hour after everything was uploaded to go through 10,000 images and kind of boil it down and say, hey, we've grouped things by the keepers and the ones you might want to check out and the rejects. Let's take a look. So let's go review culling. What's kind of interesting about Imagine is as you're uploading your photos, you can also select it to do cloud backup, and it will start in the background uploading the full res raw files as well, so you have those backed up. And the other thing that's really interesting about their culling experience is that uh, you can see all these photos are actually edited previews. So the exposure is right where it needs to be, the white balance is pretty freaking good, the colors look great, my preset has been applied so it's got my look on it. This could be a lot easier for a lot of people for culling than photos that are underexposed, that are just the white balance is way off and it's hard to see what that photo is actually gonna look and feel like once it's edited. So Imagine tried to take care of that, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and in this case, I'm just gonna select the keepers. So to start with, I'm gonna select an AI profile. And of course, I've got my own that I've trained over a whole bunch of weddings. I've uploaded them and I've refined that profile. And Imagine looks and says, okay, here's what we did originally. Here's what you wound up with. Let's make sure that we do more like this in the future. And so it will learn with you. And as your style changes, it will also adapt to your style, which is cool. While we're at it here, here's your chance to actually add auto cropping, straighten your images. If you're somebody who typically finds you're shooting pretty crooked all the time, uh, add skin smoothing. If you wanna add and you shoot a lot of portraits where that's helpful for you. Some Subject masking. So what I'm going to do, just so you can see everything on here, is literally turn everything on. Now be aware that the more layers that you're adding to these different edits, the more Lightroom is going to struggle to load each image. And that's not because of Imagine, that's because Lightroom has six or seven adjustment layers now added to each photo, and so it's going to just take more of your computer. So if you have a slower computer, uh, I find it's a lot faster uh, to limit how many of these adjustments you're adding. However, for the sake of having them and seeing them, uh, let's also go to, into other AI tools. So if you want to, you can add portrait cropping if you're shooting a portrait specific session. If you are shooting real estate, you can add window pull, which is going to try and dynamically adjust the actual outside exposure inside of your windows. That'll be very handy in bride prep or groom prep where things are often just really, really blown out. Headshot crop, exactly the same kind of situation as the portrait crop. And then perspective correction, uh, it turns out you're not allowed to do that and straighten together. So if you shoot a lot of real estate, that could actually be super helpful for you. In my case, with this particular day, it's not gonna be something that I need to worry about. So with that all said, <laughs> that was a lot. Let's go ahead and click on edit. And it's been sent for editing. Now, at this point, I don't have to re-upload the files because I already uploaded them during the culling phase. But if you're just starting with the edit, well, yeah, they're going to need to upload. And 
on average, I think Imagine edits one photo per half a second. So to edit a thousand photos should be 20 or 30 minutes by the time Imagine says, hey, ready to download. So with that in mind, I'm going to go get a coffee and come back. And when that's finished, I will resume this video. Okay, so I've opened up Lightroom. Here are the edited photos fresh from Imagine. We can take a look here and just show you some before and after. So here's an example photo. Here is the original image. And then you can see that Imagine has done a few different things. First off, it's adjusted the basic settings in this photo. So it's adjusted the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, just all this stuff in the main develop panel. It's adjusted based on my particular trained AI profile. Then it's gone ahead and it's added some adjustment layers. So it's whitened the teeth, it's added skin smoothing, background mask and subject mask. So here is before all of that. And here is after. So you can see it really does separate the subject from the background quite a bit. And all of these different settings can be tuned inside of Imagine when you're going to edit the actual photo. You can set it to say, okay, I want you to apply this much strength teeth whitening. I want you to do this with the skin smoothing. I want you to have the background masking reduce the saturation by this much and the exposure by this much. You can kind of dial this into your own preferences. I personally prefer it to be a little bit more on the subtle side, specifically because if we actually look at the subject mask here and I hit O, you're gonna see that the subject mask is pretty good. Like on this particular photo, it's good, but there are also some like artifacts almost on the outside of the subject. And you'll find that once in a while, Imagine doesn't quite nail the subject masking, which is why I tend to err more on the side of keep it subtle. And if I wanna add an extreme effect later, well, I can do that after I open it up in Lightroom. So let's take a look at a few other photos here. Um, there is a, a crazy, amount of different lighting situations on this particular wedding day. You can see that a lot of these photos look pretty darn good, like right out of the box. And then some of them, it's like, imagine just kind of loses the plot. It'll say, okay, this is what you want, right? And I'm like, no, that's, that's not quite it, right? Like this is probably closer to where it should have been in this particular photo. And so that's what I want you to understand is that this is a tool that does save a ton of time and it's not perfect, and you're gonna have to kind of work with those limitations. And if you know that going in, then you're gonna be really happy with it. So here's another example. The white balance is pretty good, but I actually think since we had a nice tungsten room and it was nice and warm, it probably should have been closer to, you know, around here. So it's not perfect all the time. Once in a while, it just misses it. But if we fast forward to like the actual wedding day, so here's the ceremony. <laughs> they brought their dog in as a ring bearer, which was the best thing ever. You can see that the actual lighting in the ceremony was like insanely harsh. So direct sun on people, really dark shadows, really bright highlights. And overall, it's pretty good. Like this is a pretty decent image. If I show you the before and I show you the after, Imagine has gone ahead, said, okay, we need the subject to be brighter. We wanna make sure we increase the exposure without blowing out the dress. It's done a great job. And now I'm gonna to have to go in here later and say, okay, let's go ahead and adjust this. Let's add some, maybe some highlights and some whites over here, balance things out, right? This one right here, background mask was okay, but not perfect. So like that would be my, my one thing that I hope they improve in the future is that the background masking gets a little bit more accurate because once in a while it, it misses. Uh, however, it's still saving so much time. Like on a thousand photos, the fact that everything is straightened, everything is cropped and the exposure is really close. I can just whip through and say, okay, I wanna brighten this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit K, adjust him a little bit and just make him brighter. And it's just way faster than if I had to start from scratch and I had to add those extra steps, right? Of going in and adjusting the crop and going in and adjusting the exposure to kind of a base level and going in and adjusting the white balance to where I like it, right? It saved me those steps. So probably 50% of the editing process is those kind of small things that really matter, but anybody could do. They're not like super creative decisions. That's where I think Imagine is really a great tool. So let's hop in here. I'm gonna start an actual 60 minute timer and we're gonna edit some photos together, see how far I can get through 1157 photos in the next 60 minutes. Let's do it. All right, so I just wanted to talk about my kind of editing process while you're watching this time lapse. So you're gonna see me flip back and forth between the library view and the develop view. And that's because in the grid view, I'm able to actually compare one image to another and see kind of in that group of images and make sure that everything is consistent from photo to photo to photo. And sometimes I get lucky and I can select a bunch of photos at once, make a adjustment and get them all very close just with one click rather than going photo by photo. Um, the second reason I do that is because images tend to load faster in the grid view. Now you're gonna see that I spend a lot of time in this pre-rehearsal dinner because the color inside of this particular room was really tricky. You've got really low overhanging lights and so everybody has a different white balance on them pretty much and there was just a lot of going in and adjusting each person's skin and making sure that the skin tone looked okay. Now, on the next day, you'd think it'd be easier because it's daytime, right? 
Well, no, because inside of this room, we've got all these really weird tones and overhead fluorescence, and it just went on and on and on. So you're going to see most of my time is spent with localized adjustments, just getting all of those things corrected and just tweaking the crop here and there. I'm going on to the bride's skin, making sure that you can see her legs. For some reason, were sticking out further from the door, and therefore, they were a different white balance. So I had to go in and correct that. And then every single photo, um, I had to do it. Now, one interesting thing, just my experience looking at this and just kind of blindly trusting Imagine to call the photos, I found it interesting which photos it chose and which ones it didn't, because there are certain photos where it chose like 15 of a kind, and then there were other photos where um, it only chose one. So I'm kind of wondering like which unique photos did you skip in order to give me the 15 photos of the bride in front of the door, you know? Um, with that said, once I got outside, life got a lot better and a lot more fun <laughs> to actually deal with colors that are like nice and ISO that was set at not a crazy astronomical level. And then back to the bride prep where I had lots of color cast to deal with. And then this reception detail shot. And this series was, again, a lot of work. I had to go in because Imagine by itself can't deal with these super complex light environments where you've got light bouncing all over the place and I have to do individual masks of every single table to get things to kind of feel natural and make sure the windows aren't blown out, right? Like it was just a lot of work and a lot of time. So I will say if you've got an easy wedding, meaning it was overcast and outside and the light is really flat and beautiful, well then yeah, Imagine is going to get your photos like 99% of the way there. It's going to be mind-blowing how much faster it makes the editing for you. If, however, you have a wedding like this where the light is really insanely crazy all over the place at every part of the day, you're still going to have to do some tweaking and make some adjustments. As long as you know that going in, then Imagine is still a really helpful tool because it is straightening your photos, it is adjusting the exposure, it is adding those masks, it's, it's doing a lot, like it does help. Then yeah, I can actually see getting through a wedding this size in a couple of hours, which is sort of mind-blowing considering when I started editing weddings, it literally took me two or three days to edit one from start to finish. All right, so it's been an hour. I have officially edited 329 of 1100 photos, so I did not get close to finishing my full thousand photo wedding gallery. However, um, it's been one hour. So at that kind of rate, I would assume that the rest of the wedding would probably take me about three and a half hours for a thousand photos. So depending on your editing speed, I would say that's probably eh, 40, maybe 50% faster for me than had I started from scratch and I was adding all of these layers manually and going into Lightroom and saying, hey, add subject masking, making sure I crop, making sure I straighten. There is a lot of time saved here, even though it's not as crazy as getting everything done in an hour. And I think that's the main thing about Imagine. It's an amazing tool if you look at it in the right way. You're the kind of photographer who is slammed all the time. Like you have a backlog six months long. You're just not getting your photos out on time. You're editing every waking second. You're stressed out of your mind. Your clients aren't happy. Like Imagine can make some amazing changes for you by saving you that 30 or 40 or even 50% of your editing time. So you can have more of a life. You can be less stressed out. You can maybe take on a few more shoots and make some more money. Spend time on your SEO and your website design and your branding and all that stuff, right? You can take that time and pay to have your editing be faster, and that's a great investment in your business because you can spend that time on more highly valuable activities. On the other hand, if you're just starting out and you don't have a ton of sessions, you could also use Imagine in a different way. You could go out and buy a photographer's AI profile that they have honed that look over 10 years of photographing or more and thousands and thousands of edits, and you can take that and apply it to your photos right away. What's so interesting about this whole thing is back in the day when you used to shoot on film, you'd take your film, you'd put it in the camera, you'd take photos of the event you were shooting, and then you would get those photos developed and you'd hand them to the client. And that was the process. And so everything about what you needed to know was more to do with the actual behind the camera stuff, the lighting, the composition, the camera settings, knowing how to actually set up your scene and capture the moment. Like that was so key and a bit of a lost art, honestly, because we've gotten so used to high burst rate shooting where we spray and pray and we shoot in raw and we can edit everything to our heart's desire 10,000 different ways. And honestly, if Imagine allows you to take your photos to the client and say, you know what, I have two different options here. Uh, I can edit them manually. It takes me three or four months and here's the process and here's my price. Or if you want, I do have this AI option. It's $1,500 less. You'll get your photos in 24 hours, but it's not 
as many tweaks. Like it's not going to be as personalized. It's going to go through. It's going to adjust your colors. It's going to develop it a lot like it would develop film. So you'll have my look. You'll have my style. It just won't have those Photoshop type edits. And if you gave the client that option, I'm kind of curious what they'd take. And if the clients would be more interested in that option, I think that would really set me free at least when it comes to my workflow. Because although I don't mind editing, let's be real, if I could spend more time with people doing the things I love and just capturing more, uh, I think that would be a better and more artistic kind of creative, fulfilling way to kind of run a business. So with that said, I think that Imagine is an amazing tool. I personally use it. I have paid for it. Um, I'm a big fan because it helps me in my workflow. And I think if you're interested in something like this, you really should check it out. There's 1,500 free edits if you use the link in the description or the top comment of this video. And uh, try Try it. See what you think and leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you've tried it for yourself, I would love to hear what your experience was, whether you loved it, whether you hated it, leave that in the comments. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.